What's up, Gunpla Modelers? This is Strider Prime, bringing you a new edition of Gundam Customs. And today I'm going to make the 144 scale Mobile Suit Gundam Heavy Arms Custom from the Gundam Wing Endless Waltz uh, OVA series. Or, yeah, OVA series. This was the custom design of the original heavy arms from the wing series when uh, when you thought that the series was over and they decided to make a three-part um, OVA um, short I would say and then they turned it into a, um, I think it was an hour and a half movie but it, it was um, it is an interesting take on the original heavy arms kit now we all seen the new heavy arms master grade version and even though uh, Bandai has released pretty much all the wing kits. They've began teasing us with, of course, the Death Psych Hell kit, which it's already it came out about a year ago, a little over a year ago. I think it was two years now. However, waiting for the other custom kits, the other custom suits from the Endless Walls uh, movie, has been the uh, has been a an slow anticipation for everybody. I think there was even rumors that the next um, custom kit will not be heavy arms, but it'll probably be Nataku. Is it Nataku? I think it was Nataku. I could be wrong. Regardless, <clears throat> I've been a big fan, of course, of the heavy arms custom. It is one of those interesting kits to see in a massive amount of firepower. Um is, uh, you know, with the, with the combination of missiles, uh, Gatling cannons, chest cannons, grenade launchers, and whatever, it has no room for any type of energy-based weapons, not even a beam saber. But if we all remember it from the animated series, it took down a lot of mobile suits until it was, you know, it's... That's the, the one downside of having a projectile-based mobile suit. Once it's done, you're done. You need to back out, you know, retreat, regroup, and, you know, rearm yourself with more, you know, bullets and missiles and whatever. Nevertheless, it knows how to bring the rain down when the time comes. Which now brings me to this kit. I've always wanted this kit. I never got it. Actually, no, that's a complete lie. I had this kit um, maybe 10 years ago, and... For whatever reason, something happened where it got damaged and destroyed. Um, eh, it's a long story. But I decided to get myself another one, and I did. So let's see what we have to work with. It is a classic kit. Even though it is considered an HG, which is considered high grade, it's not the norm, high, normal high grade that we all remember or we all know with our current mobile suits. This one has problems. And we're going to discover these problems together. Here's the manual. We'll put this to the side. Alright, so first tray we see here is the blue tray, which is the feet. The uh, positioning of the... Of <clears throat> the um, missile launching pack right here. I'm noticing one thing, and this was a comment that I received in my pr previous video on how am I going to deal with the seam lines, because unlike current suit, current uh, high-grade kits where they figure out how to cover, you know, specific areas that doesn't show seam lines, this wasn't the case when these kits were coming out. As you see, there's a seam line right in between, right in down the middle of this, um, <clears throat> of this foot so, how am I going to, you know, I would definitely have to find a way to not only close it up, but sand it down. This holds true here with the legs. You see, it's going down the front part of the leg. So you'll see that seam line and it's going to be annoying. Um, this is going to be evident, um, this is going to hold true for the, the, the legs and the thigh. And clearly the arms uh, 
Um, here's the blue, more blue parts, the lighter blue parts. The Gatling cannons. I can understand that the same line will really be, doesn't matter here because it's it it conforms to the actual Gatling guns features. Just the sides here that's going to be a little interesting. Um, and then here's another dark. This is like there's three types of colors. We got the white. We got two dark navies. We got one light turquoise blue. That's nice. That's pretty good. So I'm looking at pretty interesting detail. Here are the polycaps, of course. Polycaps uh, gives you the joints and the hands, rubber hands. Not bad. I wouldn't mind that. And then here's the stickers, which we will not use. For those of you who probably heard me uh, correctly, yes, this is going to be a custom paint job. Because if I'm going to sand this thing down, uh, what's the point? I might as well paint it. So let's look at the manual. some uh, clearly some historical facts on the on Troy Barton and his uh, heavy arms custom that we all we all see here then there's uh, in this page here we have the the, fun, the suit finally built and the color guide and then we have the tray, the uh, parts of the tray that we need. Clearly, nothing is going to be omitted. Everything is going to be used. Uh, actually, no, that's not totally true because, um, like, the leg part has the um, closed missile pod, and then of course you have it, another part to show that it's firing, so it's open. So one of them is going to be omitted, and you know what's going to be so. This part covers the legs, the waist, the arms, the chest, the gun, the head, and then positioning up everything, and that's it. Final assembly is complete. This looks like it may be a fun build, considering that I'm going to be gluing and sanding a lot of parts here. Well. Let's see what we have to work with and let's see what we have to do. Let's start building high grade Gundam Heavy Arms Custom. Alright, so let's begin with the building of the high grade Heavy Arms Custom, 140, 144 scale. And as you can see, the small amount of parts will dictate the parts that I need to make the legs. There's a lot of preparation here to do. And first up, we're going to begin with the thigh armor. Putting this polycap here. And this part has to be in this position, so it looks like that. Now, this is the part where many people are asking me about the seam lines. Yes, the seam lines will be visible. Here. If I uh, hold them like that, you'll see the lines that will go right through this. Clearly, at the time, Bandai didn't think about this. However, here is a technique that we've all seen. We're going to put glue. And not just any glue. This one is, to me, is cement. Unlike the extra thin cement, which I sometimes use. This one is a little bit thicker. Why would I want to use a little bit thicker paint? Uh, cement, I mean? Well, for starters, giving it an extra... Um, excuse me. Giving it an extra coating of, a, of the cement will allow you to bleed out the plastic a bit. So that way, when you want to sand it down, you can make sure it's nice and even. So, let me see if I can do this properly on camera. It's 
very thick so be careful where you apply it actually you know what Okay, a lot easier that way. If it bleeds out to the edges, that's not bad. That's okay. There's a whole reason for this. Now, let's close them up. And using this, I'm going to squeeze it a little until it bleeds out from the part. Use the rubber on this. Do not use the metal part because you may damage the part. I would like to find another tool I could use instead of using this. But for now this is a lot as long as you know what you're doing and you, and you have a little patience, you're okay. Now, you see? If you want to be slick, apply another layer of glue. Not too much, just enough. So when it dries, you have a little bit of a mound. All right, so give it a good hour for it to dry. Um, more than an hour would be fine. The last thing you want is the whole thing is dried up, but a small portion of the glue is still um, poly, you know, still mandible, and it will warp the plastic. Remember, you want this part to be nice and solid so that way you can begin sanding. Now, the sanding, um, we'll cover the sanding part in a minute. Let's continue on with these parts. Um, okay. I will need this and this. This is a, the more noticeable port part of the kit, the actual legs itself. that put these two together and where is another clip I could use so we're going to do this again Uh, if you can't find glue like this, um, testers um, glue, which comes in those little um, in a little tube and like little tube, toothpaste, toothpaste tubes, are uh, exceptional. They they're they're good. This one I want to do a lot because this one I have to obviously squeeze a little bit more and make sure it's nice and flush. Squeezing it on this part would probably may not be a good idea. Just get in areas that you believe you can do it. Like back here. There we go. And for safe measure. Whoops, that's a little too much. If you can. 
try to put an, uh, enough glue in the areas where you cut the actual part from the tree. That way when you sand it down it will be nice and flush. Plus you're also filling some holes with the glue. Yeah I know you could use putty but this one is okay. Okay let's wait until this dries and then we'll sand it. <laughs> 